Hey, so levitate skill. Got the animations improved a little bit. Um, there's a whoa, that was crazy. Still got to work on that velocity when um, when you get hit in the air. Uh, so what happens is now when you jump into the air, there's this little animation going on. Gosh, this guy's annoying me. Kill him. God, kill him. There we go. So there's a little, an there's a couple animations that are happening here. One is a little circle that goes off when you jump and as well as when you land and both of those represent a small damaging you can actually see if we turn this on there's a small damage going on right there in fact if I stand near these pillars I'll jump into the air and you see it damages them a little bit on the way down and up and let's go to HP mode oh we can't actually see that right now doesn't actually show the hit points for these pillars, but they are losing some health, just as if you were to hit it with the sword a bunch. These pillars get smaller over time. You can see them kind of like reducing a little bit. Same thing would happen if I just sat here and jumped the whole time, both on the landing and on the launch. Uh, and then, okay, so this is super great to have this levitate skill. This is super fun. Um, and there's also, oh, I forgot to mention these little dust particles. If you switch directions, there's a little dust coming off the ground now. It's just kind of a nice little bit of juice. Uh, but the most important thing I've done now, let's go ahead and let's turn on limit players and then we'll turn on this bit of code and this bit of code. And that should do it. This should change the player's weapon. So this is a pretty big deal um, to have done because it, it gosh, it, it took a while to do, but it's super exciting to have. So there's no, there's no eyes, eyes for the player right now and other stuff. Because we're just adding the, um, we're taking off everything that's sort of extraneous and on, and adding in the sword at this point. But you can see the sword is added to this animation. If I walk around like this, you see there's another double sword above his head. Um, that's because that sword has not been placed correctly into his hands um, for that animation yet. It's only this idle animation right here that's working. And the reason he doesn't have eyes is because in his idle animation, oh, this is all messed up. Hold on. Um, let's turn this to ortho. There we go. That's better. And male, this male idle animation. Um, you can see his eyes are right there, but his weapon is just hidden, right? If I were to go like that, it would unhide it. I basically got a bit of code in there right now that's that's hiding any layer that shouldn't be visible. So for the idle animation, it works nice because it hides his weapon. Um, and then it uh, adds back in the weapon with some other code with some nice rotations and things like that. But for some reason, it's also getting rid of his eyes and his belt and his hair. Not quite sure why. I'll figure that out. Might be because those layers are translated. Oh, that's probably what it is. It's just a translation. Let's see. Let's see it real quick. If we can fix that. Model size, uh, layer, voxels grow. I'm not exactly sure why it's doing that. It shouldn't be hiding. It might be setting the layer hidden if there's any kind of trend. In fact, that's what it, probably what it is. It's translation. Is it hiding the layer somewhere in here? Uh, I remember it, I did this somewhere else. Maybe it's in this group node or shape node, something like that. There's probably something in here that's hiding those those eyes and and belt and everything, even though they're not hidden. This would be hidden. This is not hidden, but anyways, uh, this is super cool to have. Uh, so basically it's taking this sword and um, right here, only a single frame. This is so cool because I only have to draw one thing and then it can add in, it can go back to this male idol animation and say, hey, I need to have that sword translated negative three on the X, negative six on the Y and up 15 on the Z to put that weapon in his hands right there. And then also I need to rotate it uh, seven degrees on the X plane, 13 negative degrees on the Y plane. And that's all. And that's what it's doing. So check this out in this animations here. I have to do this manually, but I've got some, basically some manual animations all set up. This is the translation here for male idol A0 for the sword, for the weapon layer, right? So we can replace the weapon with the sword or an ax or whatever and it does all those calculations for us 
and we don't have to animate a sword through all of the myriad of animations that we're going to have to do for every character, right? So the mail mill has three idle animations. It has all these different run animations and all the shield animations and the sword animation. Every one of these, all we have to do is specify a translation and a rotation for the weapon, and it can automatically add those in just by having this single voxel file right here the sword completely unrotated and uh, this is huge time savings for me as a developer it means i can go and create tons of weapons tons of armor little bit you know bits of armor like the your shoulders and your helmet and everything can be different you can have a cloak and all that stuff and it would will not take me that much time as a developer to add all these fun things check it out we've got an axe here this looks really stupid uh, in the game, but right now let's let's go ahead and take a look at this axe. We're gonna we're gonna switch out the weapon for the player now to an axe. Instead of weapon being sword, we'll say weapon is axe. It doesn't look that good yet, but it's just the fundamentals of being able to switch the weapon is so sweet. So check it out. He's got that that what should be an axe. Remember the, the run animation right here is not, not finished yet and the sword animation is not finished but this idle is. So I can stand at any angle and see that. It's got the axe there rotated for that correct angle. For that correct angle. So this is very exciting. It's the foundation of something which is going to make it a lot of fun art assets for, for Wraithbinder being very uh, accessible to me uh, as far as term time of hours put in, this is this takes so much time to to animate all this stuff. Like if I were to go, look how many animations there are just for the player already. There's like, gosh, at least thirty or forty, and we're we're nowhere near um, the number of animations that we'll have eventually once this game's finished. With Songbringer, I had hundreds hundreds of animations for rocks, hundreds of frames. Sorry. I think I had almost a thousand frames of animation just for Rock alone for the main character. And the thousand frames, think about trying to add one little thing, like if you wanted to go and add some, a shirt to that, you have to go draw a thousand frames worth of art. <sighs> yeah, so anyways, this is a huge, huge thing for me and for players of Wraithbinder. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching this video. Catch you next time.